With nothing but a sword, a horse, bow and arrows, and the poncho on his back, a young man sets off to battle against huge and powerful monstrosities in Shadow of the Colossus. Fans of 2001's PlayStation 2 cult classic, Eco, will quickly notice the inspired artwork and vast, desolate, beautiful environments of this game as being unmistakably similar. Indeed, that's because Shadow of the Colossus is being brought to you by the same team who developed that game. Only this time, the focus is squarely on these epic battles against more than a dozen different behemoths. The game attempts to combine exploration, platforming, combat, and puzzle-solving elements to create an experience that, well, just look at it. It's pretty much unlike anything else out there. Recently, we had a chance to play through a demo that allowed us to square off against the game's first three colossi, which gave us a good impression of what to expect, but also raised some interesting questions. The story of Shadow of the Colossus is shrouded in mystery. The main character is anonymous, but what's apparent is that he's seeking to restore a young woman back from the dead. He arrives at an ancient temple where an ominous voice instructs him to hunt down the colossi wandering the world if he hopes to be reunited with his friend. The main character doesn't speak much, but you can tell he's probably thinking, she'd sure as hell better be grateful when she wakes up. Basically, the hero's gotta first track down each of the different colossi, and then figure out how to kill them. Oh, and then actually do it. Even just finding the colossi isn't simple. You can ride fast and hard on horseback, but sometimes you need to dismount and start climbing and pulling off some death-defying leaps to get to where you need to be. How do you find your way, by the way? By using your sword to guide you. It's magically imbued to help point you in the right direction. Once you find your target, the real battle begins. As you can imagine, a Colossus won't go down without a serious fight. But since you're this lanky little guy, a Colossus also might have a difficult time actually landing a hit on you. And luckily for you, these things tend to be all covered in thick fur and rocky protrusions. Just the sort of stuff you can latch onto. You need to isolate your target's weak points, climb your way up to them, and then strike deep and true with your sword, stabbing away until your foe is drained of life. The Colossi are these enigmatic creatures, as amazing to behold as they are frightening. Why exactly you're forced to engage and defeat these wondrous creatures is another of the game's compelling plot lines. The presentation of Shadow of the Colossus is clearly one of the game's strengths. The game creates a truly cinematic look, with a lot of subtle effects that make the experience appear incredibly lifelike. The animation of the main character and the sheer sense of scale of both the Colossi and the world itself are just really impressive. There's a beautifully composed musical score that matches the action as well. The music shifts to match the tone and tempo of each battle, escalating to a crescendo as you move in for the attack. You can tell the developers were aiming to create an overall look and feel that rivals a big budget adventure movie. For good measure, the game will support widescreen progressive scan displays and surround sound audio, making for as immersive of an experience as possible. The controls for Shadow of the Colossus take a little bit of getting used to, especially on horseback. The horse doesn't respond to your commands right away, so you'll need to get a feel for how to make it run in the right direction. On foot, it's easy to switch between your sword and your bow, and also to figure out how to grab onto things rather than let yourself drop. When you're holding onto a ledge, or say, the tailbone of a colossus, you'll notice a grip meter start to dwindle away. It dwindles more quickly as a colossus tries to violently throw you off, and also when you prepare for an attack. So, much of the gameplay involves being careful to rest up when your humongous opponent isn't trying to fling you off. As you're hanging on for dear life, hundreds of feet off the ground, barely keeping your grip, the experience is undeniably intense. We're pretty much sold on what this game is trying to accomplish, but questions remain. Will the exploration sequences be nearly as interesting and exciting as the battles? Will the game be too short, since it's really just a string of boss fights? Will it be too easy or too hard, considering some kid with a sword really has no business whatsoever fighting things that are this massive? 
At this point, development of Shadow of the Colossus is nearly complete, so we'll find out soon enough. One thing's for sure, we absolutely can't wait to see more of this game.